We pledge to inform with candor and fairness, to entertain with dignity and good taste, to serve with vigor the needs and the welfare of the people of South Florida and our country, and above all, to conduct ourselves as befits an invited guest in the homes of our viewers. On July 29, 1956, South Florida's WCKT Television signed on. A new television service to South Florida viewers was begun at noon today. At that hour, WCKT began permanent programming. Good evening, I'm Wayne Ferris, and you have just witnessed a scene from the past, the birth of a television station. The station was, and still is, located along the 79th Street Causeway connecting Miami and Miami Beach in North Bay Village. A television station is something new, a child of the space age. WCKT is all television station, the first in Florida to be built from the ground up. We also like to think it's the most beautiful. A unique expression of the subtropical character of our viewing area is set in the middle of Biscayne Bay. WCKT television is uniquely located to open a window on South Florida. But when the station's first owner, Biscayne Television Corporation, ran into trouble with the FCC and lost the license to broadcast, New England shoe manufacturer and real estate developer Sidney Anson won a government auction to buy the station. Anson's Sunbeam Television Corporation claimed ownership of WCKT in December 1962. WCKT has mirrored the character of its locale, ever cognizant that as a television medium, this station serves a community larger than the city in which our studios are located. In those early years, Channel 7 brought NBC to South Florida viewers, carrying its hits and developing homegrown ones, too. Robot, I need your assistance, old friend. Not Children's programs like the popular Toby the Robot. Hi, boys and girls, and welcome once again to Charlie Reads the Comics. Uh, this is Toby the Robot. In case you were wondering, did you see him wave a little while ago? Isn't he nice? Castro triumphed in 1959. Documentaries and public affairs programming were a big part of what made WCKT stand out in an industry still in its infancy. WCKT's award-winning Outlook series is the first and only weekly news film documentary production in South Florida. Florida Forum has presented important national and international figures on the most critical issues of our times. The programs earned WCKT critical acclaim. And if proof is measured in recognition, then the evidence is WCKT's many awards and honors, including 31 major national awards presented to WCKT during the last decade for achievements in news, documentary, and public affairs programming. Ed Anson worked at his father's side from the start. In December 2019, he looked back. Well, I consider it a great privilege that we were able to be in the television business. It was wonderful. He became head of the station's parent company in 1971. We had a 30-minute uh, a documentary every week uh, for quite a while on various subjects. A lot of it revolved around the uh, civil rights movement you know, in the 60s, 70s. On December 27, 1965, WCKT became the first Miami station to telecast in live color. As technology evolved, so did the newscasts in the 1970s. Wayne Ferris and Vic Mason, Channel 7 News. They go out and they report stories, but they also dig in. They report the news that others may miss. Carmel Cafaro. The thing that I find rewarding about my work is informing people. And if by informing people, we can avoid one person from being hurt or taken in, then it's a success. Richard Whitcomb. We get lots of reaction. We get called uh, communist one night, uh, liberal the next night, conservative the next night. The fact is, we don't have any set uh, political position. Reactions are good because if people aren't reacting, maybe we haven't said anything at all. Mark Ludner. We take apart any news story, and the thing that is most important about that story is people. And I very much enjoy meeting those people and showing our viewers who they are and what they're doing. Don Dare. Broward County is the fastest growing county in Florida. And because of that, we have some unique problems. And with the Channel 7 News Bureau right here, I think we offer the most complete coverage of this area. With people like Carmel Cafaro, Richard Whitcomb, Mark Ludner, Don Dare, on Channel 7 News, you'll be the first to know.
New Center 7 tonight with Steve Rondonero, Sally Fitz. Much like the area, South Florida's Channel 7 was growing and changing. And with that, we wrap up News Center 7 tonight. Our next news is tomorrow morning at 6.30 on Today in Florida. And now for all of us at News Center 7, thanks for watching. Good night. Good night. In 1983, out went the station's original call letters, WCKT, and in came WSVN. Time has come, we've made our change with WSVN. Dubbed the hometown station. Get that hometown feeling just like family and friends. The hometown station, WSVN. Did you know that Channel 7 is the only totally locally owned television station in South Florida? Live from locations around South Florida, this is News Center 7 Live at 5 with Frank Robertson and Denise White. WSVN and its pairing with NBC proved to be a powerful combination for much of the 80s. WSVN, let's all be on Miami Vice, Bill Collins is dressed to kill. Smash hits like Miami Vice helped bring in even more viewers. He's going to kill the little twerp. But in 1987, a seismic shift in the South Florida TV landscape made front page headlines. NBC bought WTVJ, bringing to an end its long relationship with WSVN. At 3 a.m. on New Year's Day, South Florida's broadcasting industry will undergo some major changes. One result is that Channel 7, which has carried NBC programs since it began broadcasting 32 years ago, will become an independent. Tonight, your hometown station, Channel 7 WSBN, is celebrating its independence day as a new era begins in South Florida television. The 1989 New Year would ring in with uncertainty about the future direction of the station. When you knew that relationship was going to break, they were moving in a different direction, what went through your mind? Oh, I thought this was really a dire circumstance, really dire. Anson never considered selling the station, so he and his management team came up with a new plan. January 2nd, 1989. Broadcast history is made. South Florida's news station truly becomes that, a news station. This station will become the, um, the number one independent television station in the country. And it would center around news. Everybody predicted, I say the world predicted, that this was not going to work. But he took the bet and knew in order to survive and succeed, his newscast would need to stand out from the rest. More stories, faster pace, bold graphics and music. Sally Fitz. Steve Dawson. Where'd that come from? It came from my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, you know, we had to do things, so you had to be creative, innovative, you know, to survive, you know. WSVN didn't just survive, it thrived and expanded today in Florida was born. Three hours each weekday with a focus on weather, traffic, and breaking news. The things you need to know to start your day are the things we'll tell you about every morning starting at 6 a.m. on Channel 7's Today in Florida. Only on WSVN 7. The station added syndicated shows during the day and movies at night. Ten o'clock, Sally Fitz, Steve Dawson. But the headliner of the news heavy model, a late newscast an hour earlier. Ten o'clock news on Channel 7. At the tone, the time will be 10 o'clock. Exactly. You have enough on the chat. I'm going to get you some more information right now. Channel 7 News at 10 o'clock. News before you know it. Before long, the industry took notice. You're watching South Florida's news station, WSVN 7. Fitz, Sanchez. 
and while not everyone appreciated the approach, they couldn't deny its success connecting with the audience and carving out a niche for a station many industry insiders left for dead. More exclusive and complete Team 7 coverage. We're able to do this because WSBN is the only station in the Miami Fort Lauderdale market with a fully staffed 24 hour newsroom, the largest and most aggressive news department in town. Look, we have to be more aggressive and we have to appeal more to younger viewers. That was the mission that we had to, and we did. I always say we can't afford to be boring. The blossoming relationship with the upstart Fox Network was a perfect fit. Its slate of programs and their younger viewers were tailor-made for WSVN. They're not the Cosby's, they're the Bundy's, and they're married with children. The funniest night on television just got funnier. Yes, and I'm tickled pink. Catch it all new in Living Color on its new night after Married with Children. When's your curfew? Excuse me? Beverly Hills 90210 premieres Thursday. Okay, folks, here comes the big finish. It's home box with you! With ratings success came experimentation. The real story behind the headlines. A stab at syndication with the news magazine Inside Report. Inside Report. Incredible stories. Real life heroes. Haunting mysteries. Bizarre tales. A short lived tabloid style TV buffet that mixed news, investigations, and entertainment. We make it exciting. No is not in our vocabulary. We're like a band of mavericks. We're always pushing for something more. Get the inside report with Penny Daniels, weeknights at 7 on WSVN 7. Kelly Mitchell, Jessica Aguirre. This is 7.30. 7.30, an irreverent look at the day's headlines. You might say there's plenty of hot air in tonight's cover story. Extra, extra, read all about it. Channel 7 Bulls Plug on 7.30. Which later evolved into one of the country's longest-running locally produced entertainment and lifestyle shows, Deco Drive. The colorful sets and fashionable faces have changed over the years, but Deco's daily take on celebrity headlines in South Florida style has endured. And this is Deco Drive. Only one South Florida show takes you where no show has gone before. Wow, that was a mouthful. Deco Drive. <laughs> Daring to be different. Look, I'm a man. Breaking all the rules. Oops, I'm sorry, can I say that? Helping the rich and famous <laughs> stay rich and famous. That's what you want. <laughs> Deco Drive with Lynn Martinez and Belkis Nerey. Weeknights at 7.30 on 7. Keep an eye out for it, okay? This is the Lexus Sports Extra with Steve Shapiro, Mike DePastorli, Donovan Campbell, and Drew Rosenhaus. And appointment television for South Florida sports fans each Sunday night. Sports Extra. I'm Steve Shapiro. Thanks for watching. Have a great night and a great week. And say hello if you see me in the streets. But it's always been news that drove Channel 7 from those first broadcasts. In August 1963, my 6 o'clock report became the first local news program to expand to a full half hour. To the modern newscasts. This is 7 News at 10. Countless journalists have chronicled the stories that shape South Florida, the country, and the world. You know, this old earth of ours is made up of almost 197 million square miles of land and water. That's a lot of territory to cover. But the Channel 7 News staff covers it each day to keep you informed of all world events. WCKT and WSVN viewers watch history unfold from their living rooms and later laptops and smartphones. Stories that help define generations. 
Castro triumphed in 1959, and the WCKT news team was in Havana when he arrived. They remained to film the circus-like trials of real and suspected Batista henchmen. Channel 7 News Director Gene Strahl interviewed Castro at 3 a.m. in a Havana TV studio. Good evening. Those you heard a few moments ago were members of the Congress of Racial Equality, Negroes and Whites in Miami. The President of the United States was assassinated yesterday and South Florida is still in shock. News vendors slowed their trucks to a crawl up Flagler Street as they leaned out of their truck shouting, Extra, the President is dead. Leave it stop! Leave it stop! The first boatload of refugees arrived in Key West April 21st, 1980. Wait in Cuba for picking up my mother and my nephew. By the time Fidel closed the Port of Mariel, more than 125,000 people had escaped to South Florida. And the pictures that we have been seeing are telling that story perhaps better than any adjectives that we could use to describe it. The Allied attack on Iraq it continues tonight at a furious pace. In a moment, we're going to take you closer. So look at these pictures, the initial bombing, as you see it, of Baghdad. Tens of thousands of Cubans this year went down to the sea in rafts and boats and hijacked ferries, risking their lives for a chance to reach the Oz called Miami. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, September 11th. Next on Today in Florida, South Florida under alert right now. A day of downforce threatens to leave our area in a flood of trouble. Okay, we're going to interrupt Elaine's report to bring you some very important information. We are just getting word that the World Trade Center is on fire. And this is obvious from the pictures, but here's the reason why. We are getting word that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Also want to see what's happening now in Little Havana. Uh, Brian Enton is there for us where I think we can imagine the mood there, Brian. <laughs> see a crowd of people that, according to what we've been hearing on our scanners uh, from the police department, is growing rapidly. Fidel Castro is dead, a man who murdered, who, who was an oppressor, a tyrant. Hello again, everyone. The World Health Organization sounding the alarm, declaring this a pandemic two months after the coronavirus was first detected in China. From empty South Florida streets to shuttered stores and restaurants, life as we knew it had drastically changed. It's hard for a lot of people to make sense of it, right? The sheer amount of death, the loss. Stories that tested our resolve. Do you remember Donna? Donna sustained winds of 140 miles an hour with gusts clocked at 180 to 200 miles an hour in some parts of the Keys. To those of us who a year ago spent three sleepless nights covering the vicious storm, the hurricane is Florida's most underestimated problem. It was May 1980. Four Metro Dade police officers were acquitted of the murder of Arthur McDuffie, an African-American businessman beaten to death when he allegedly resisted arrest. Tonight, Miami looks like a city under siege. Lift off. I felt the sky fall at Cape Canaveral after Challenger. This is a 7 News special report, the path of Hurricane Andrew. We have the core of the hurricane coming in here. You see it well formed, and it's going to cause uh, significant uh, damage. I start the guard, please, God, is screaming. It's good, God, please, no, no kill me, God, no kill me, please. Uh, this looks worse than some of the places I've seen where bombs have gone off. I think that you could put this in perspective, probably, not the total area, but the small area there. Uh, destruction in the same context as Hiroshima. Mm. Wow, that, that hits home. We can clearly see the eye right now. And this wind is absolutely unbelievable. And that's the school board building. You can see again, lots of glass to be replaced. Soon after the quake, we saw a lot of effort arriving from all over the world at the airport. But here, throughout the city, you really don't see it. Nearly two years after the earthquake, lives are still broken, still empty. <laughs> The United Nations says a million people are still living in flimsy, often makeshift tents. They eat and bathe here. They raise their children here. There are no bathrooms. We are standing where the strongest part of Hurricane Irma's eye wall struck. This 
is what the eye of Hurricane Irma left behind in the Florida Keys. Homes ripped apart, boats thrown around like toys, and the residents of Cudjo Key surrounded by devastation. I stayed in the bathroom, me and my girlfriend Donna, we stayed in the bathroom in the hallways. It was, uh, for two days it was hell. You didn't know if you were gonna make it or not. The extent of the disaster is only now becoming clear. We have live Team 7 coverage of the rescue and relief missions as well as reunions. We need help. I'm sorry, but we need help. This is a major catastrophe. But recovering from this will be unlike anything this small country has ever attempted. And one thing's for sure, they can't do it alone. We're talking years. Curfews in effect for Miami-Dade and Broward counties. Over here we also see, uh, say his name, clearly referencing uh, George Floyd. <laughs> The former Minneapolis police officer guilty on all three counts in the killing of George Floyd. This is a moment where you're about to see America change. Stories that thrust South Florida into the national spotlight. When America picked up Time magazine one day in 1981, this is the South Florida it saw. Paradise lost. As cocaine dealers shot it out on South Florida streets, at one point, officials brought in a refrigerated truck to handle the overflow of bodies at the county morgue. This is a special edition of 7 News. Good evening and welcome to our special coverage of a day of prayer and protest in South Florida. A day that didn't go as planned. I'm Jessica Aguirre. I'm Craig Stevens. Those remembering the four men shot down by Cuban MiGs had to cope with rain, pounding waves, and bouts of seasickness. We've been out on the ocean for about six hours. The seas are so rough that they are considering turning around. A DC-9 crashes in the Everglades. From the air, you can't even see the plane, and from the ground, there are no survivors to be seen. The value jet slammed into the Everglades, and right now it's assumed everyone aboard died. Once again, if you are just joining us, uh, very sad news to report here in South Florida. World famous designer uh, Gianni Versace was gunned down right in front of his home on 11th and Ocean Drive. This is a disturbance that we haven't seen the likes of since this custody controversy has been underway. Charles, Charles, yes, I know it's it's wild commotion there. What about Elian Gonzalez? Any sign of him leaving that house? They, as what I heard is we've got Elian, we've got Elian, let's go. You see him right there being taken from the home. We have confirmation now that Al Gore has indeed withdrawn his concession in the race. This is an ongoing embarrassment for the news media of this nation. CBS News now says that Florida is too close to call. Ergo, this election is still too close to call. We received notice from the State Division of Elections that we are to do a recount on the presidential race. Al Gore has called Governor George W. Bush conceded the race. We have pictures of people snorting, shooting up in this parking lot. 7 News first exposed his operation in an investigation that blew the lid off pill mill practices in South Florida. We documented abuses, including clinic parking lots, where addicts were shooting up and snorting pain pills. Right now, uh, there's a call of an active shooter. Again, the school is Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. One teacher uh, protecting the, the students may have passed. They said they had secured a, a room where there were 40 students and they were going to be evacuating those students. They do have a subject in custody. Deadliest school shooting in the history of Broward County. We begin right now with that developing story out of Surfside, where a building collapsed overnight. You're taking a look at a video from earlier this morning, a little boy that was re rescued from that collapse. This is the moment that that building, this tower, this residential building collapsed at around 1.30 this morning. I see many people on the balcony. There's, the building is gone. It, it almost resembles the trade center. There, there's a bunk bed, and uh, some that's someone's bed, and that, uh, the, the rest of the apartment just fell away from it. It tugs at, at me that it's it's an unimaginable uh, tragedy. Stories that took us to other parts of the country and the world. Our most extensive visit abroad occurred in 1959, a 10,000-mile tour of the Soviet Union. And it says, no mercy for Manuel Noriega, who, of course, remains holed up 
at the Vatican Embassy right below us. There is sorrow in Waco, but another emotion is more prevalent, anger. Anger at David Koresh for murdering those children. But surprisingly, there is also anger at the federal agents for not preventing it. When Arab and Jew shook hands, the crowd made a joyful noise. But this was a day of high hopes for lasting peace, a day of dreaming what had been undreamable. Their life at the camps isn't an easy one, but the Cubans make do as best they can. No matter where you go around here, there seems to be this great sense of camaraderie among them. And above all, the Cubans here say that they never, ever lose hope. Seven's Craig Stevens is live in Oklahoma City, and he jo joins us now with the latest. Craig, uh, what, where do we stand at this point? All right, Jessica, the death toll is now up once again. It is up to 100. And I have to tell you, after talking to fire officials, that things are moving along quickly. And Will O.J. Simpson be found guilty or not guilty? And I would suspect the people are anticipating this greatly. The situation outside the courthouse, Patrick, is changing minute by minute. The Fighting Fish, the 2003 World Series champ. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium. Who would have thought this just a few months ago? I can't believe the Florida Marlins beat the New York Chokies. Did I say Chokies? I didn't mean to say Chokies. I meant to say the New York Chokies. The Marlins beat the Yankees four games to two. Seven's Belkies Nuray, the only South Florida anchor to bring us all the live coverage. The Royal Happenings is there, live once again outside Buckingham Palace. Belkies. Hey guys, the excitement is growing all right. So are the crowd, so is the media. As the investigation into the car bomb continues, the bomb went off this morning during the height of rush hour and the car carrying all the explosives slammed into a bank. The Costa Concordia sits where she fell more than a year ago after hitting a rock off the coast of Italy. Here in his hometown of Meda, Italy, Scatino is well known and well liked, but there are those who are disturbed by the fact he left the ship. They called you this chicken of the sea. They've called you Captain Coward. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Belkis Nure live in Miami. I'm Craig Stevens live in Havana, Cuba on this blustery evening tonight where there is so much to absorb after this day today. It's a photo op many thought they'd never see and a sight certain to anger many in the exile community. Guatemala's Fuego volcano erupted with virtually no warning on June 3rd. And all around us, there were homes that are now completely covered. We're told there are still hundreds of bodies buried in this ash. Along the way, the station has also established long-running segments that offered solutions, investigations, and variety. Solving South Floridians' problems. Help me, Howard, with Patrick Frazier. All my test shows that my liver was starting to shut down on me. If Margaret didn't get a liver transplant, she would die. But the operation cost $300,000 and her insurance wouldn't pay for it. For nine months, she fought to get a transplant and failed. Then in June of 2000, she called Help Me Howard. Howard and I promised Margaret we'd try to get her on the transplant list here at Jackson, the only hospital in South Florida allowed to perform the operation. We knew it was a long shot. After all, no indigent patient from Broward had ever gotten the surgery. But with the help of too many people to name, in May of 2001, Jackson agreed to do the surgery if a perfect donor could be found. Take care. Bye-bye. But finally, Margaret was brought out. I got my new life, so that's all I wanted. Digging into the details, Carmel on the case. It's early morning at the downtown Miami-Dade jail. The night shift is about to end, and every disabled spot is taken on the street between the jail and the courthouse. And as we discovered, most of those cars belong to corrections employees who do not have permits to park in those spaces. Good morning. I see that you're parked in a disabled parking spot, but I don't see a permit. Could you explain that to me? Carmel Cafaro from Channel 7. I'm wondering, I'm wondering how you're able to park in a disabled spot. You just parked in a disabled parking spot and you don't have a sticker? Can you explain that to me? Hello? Hello? And the spice of South Florida life, a bike with Belkies. It is bright, it is light, it is yummy. Yummy breakfast pizza, the family's gonna love this one. Fish tacos via tuna can. If I can do it, you can do it. See you next time. I'm Belkis Nore. Bon appetito. Nineteen ninety-four, the year of groundbreaking ideas at seven news.
it all started with The station's pioneering spirit led to the 1994 debut of the two-story Newsplex. Seven News presents the Newsplex. The Seven Newsplex, the largest news gathering facility in local television. A working newsroom studio designed to make it easier to gather and deliver information and do it in what was, at the time, a unique style. You're watching 7 News at 5.30 with Jessica Aguirre and Rob Hanrahan. The bright red railings, satellite center, and walls of TVs turned the idea into an instant classic, so much so that even with aesthetic and digital upgrades over the decades, the Plex has withstood the test of time. When you're South Florida's number one news station, there's only one way to do things. Big. Don't believe it, just watch. Bigger. Bolder. Better news coverage. The next big thing in news coverage is right here. 7 News. Don't believe it, just watch. Also on the technology front, 7 News made its footprint on the World Wide Web in 1994. Tonight we are going high tech and we're inviting you to jump on the information superhighway. Introducing viewers to the internet in its infancy. The purpose of the data center is to get information to you faster and to get information from you faster, to make television news a two-way form of communication. Some of the tools we'll be using, high-speed fax machines, instant wire service updates, electronic display maps, and email, electronic mail. We've signed up with three online services, Prodigy, America Online, and CompuServe, each of which gives anyone who has a personal computer at home the opportunity to contact us with a unique user ID. We've already received some electronic mail from viewers. Soon we'll be sending you mail, including information on some of the stories we're working on. That's so you can let us know information we need to develop those stories. Bottom line, you don't need to be into computers to get something out of the data center. Welcome to the world of interactive TV. As that world expanded, so did the station's online presence. Just type in this address. <laughs> Get online with 7 Online. From the launch of WSVN.com in 1995 to embracing social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter in the 2000s. Get tweets on breaking news, stories that matter to you. There were digital connections with the audience and also the personal ones. That's why last year, WSVN co-hosted more than 30 community events. Events like the Orange Bowl Festival, Black History Month, the Miami March of Dimes Superwalk, just to name a few. Efforts bolstered by special programs created to celebrate the South Florida community. The annual Winterfest Boat Parade. It's a South Florida tradition that has entertained generations. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Happy holidays, fighting your mom. It's an amazing honor to be the Grand Marshal of Winterfest. And Kai Ocho. And you are looking live at South Florida's Fiesta. Food, drink, music, and mayhem. Only the good kind of mayhem, though. Welcome to Little Havana and the world's largest street party, Cayocho 2003, from the corner of 22nd Avenue and 8th Street. Hey, everybody, glad you're here with us. I'm Craig Steve. And I'm Laurie Jennings. Thanks for choosing us to share this great celebration with. And in the philanthropic community, dedicating resources and airtime to organizations like <laughs> the United Way. Today, United Way of Broward County is proud to officially name its headquarters the Anson Building. I would hope the public would want to be involved in the United Way, contribute to the United Way, get involved in the agencies, donate time as well as money, and, and help to build a better community. Habitat for Humanity. We at Channel 7 are very proud to be associated with Habitat, and we have for many years. I've always wanted to have my own house and be a homeowner with my family, and I'm happy that we get to have, I get to have my own room. And I was like, yes, thank you, Jesus. I'm very humbled by th this experience with Habitat because other lives have touched my life along with my children. Boys and Girls Clubs. I put my name in the middle and I'm playing colors on the side of it. 
with 12 clubs and over 13,000 kids here in the county that were serving. This was a great location we felt to be highlighted for their shoe carnival. Best buddies. And they taught me how to be not, not afraid of speaking, be a little independent, finding jobs, and just to be yourself, you know. You, don't, you have to get out there. I think to reach out to people and support people who uh, need an extra hand is critical to any community, any culture. And feeding South Florida. Whether it was a hurricane, Dorian, Maria, or the government shutdown, or in this global pandemic, it wasn't about um, worrying how we were going to serve our families. Well, part of it, <coughs> in, in terms of philanthropy, I mean, I, I, I feel that I'm in a position to be philanthropic, and I should, and I enjoy being philanthropic, and I do. I, I've often said, for the audience to relate to you, you have to relate to the audience. You have to be serving them in whatever way you can. So he was very generous and very quiet and humble about it. He didn't do it for affection. He didn't do it for attention. He did it because it was his core value. So if there's someone who were to sit down and watch this video 25 years, 50 years from now, we won't be here. But um, what is it that you would want them to know about this station, its impact on the South Florida community, uh, its impact on, on the television community? <laughs> I, I want them to know that every day, day we do the best we can and, and uh, we try to continue to engage our audience and to give them the best newscast and everything else that we can. And that mission continues. When Ed Anson, the driving force behind WSVN, died in 2020, WSVN anchors and reporters looked back on what the man who ran the station for nearly half a century had built. From the very beginning of when I walked into the building, it just felt right. It felt like home. It's owned by a family. People are treated fairly. You see that when 2008, when the economy crashed and everybody was laying off, Mr. Anson didn't lay anybody off. He kept every employee because he had hired them and he was going to keep them. Did his profits go down? I'm sure, but he stuck with it. It's truly a family-run operation. I'll never forget those times throughout our country's history and in our community's history, 9-11 and the recession and all those tough times, even now COVID. You always saw in this industry a turnover and a fear that didn't exist here. This building has been around for a while. It's probably the oldest TV building in town, uh, but people stay. And the reason why they stay is because of the environment, the people who work here, and it all starts at the top. They made people feel special, and I think that's why people stay. You know, you're, you're part of the fold. And when somebody believes in you, 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 you stay. I say this all the time, we really are, and as cliche and tacky and boring as it sounds, we really all do get along and we are all just a big giant family under this roof. And I know that sounds like, yeah, right, whatever, wah, 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 but it's true. And there was kind of this unspoken pledge that if you can, if you're fortunate enough to be working at Channel 7, that if you are able to work with people and work consistently with them, that you're growing something. Not just growing professionally, but you're growing personally. You become intertwined. Your lives become uh, intertwined. We grew up together. We have been together through marriages, children, even divorces. We've got so many people who've met their life partners in this building. Mine used to work in this building. Um, and so many people in this town, in this industry, have come through these doors. And so you not only have a family here every day in North Bay Village, but you have sort of an industry-wide family around the world. And it, there's just a really something incredibly special about the people who work here um, and the bond that is forged here with breaking news and going for hours upon hours and just the trust that you have with, with everyone. It's just, it's really like nowhere else I've worked. When you look at other stations, that perhaps don't have the visual appeal, you know, of the graphics that Channel 7 does. Many of them are revolving doors for talent. 
uh, it's not the way it is here. It's interesting because you think of, and so many people do, they think of news as being like this, oh, it's this cutting edge but cutthroat business where people don't really like one another. I've never felt that way here. In fact, the one benefit of working in local TV news and working at this particular station, if I had to say which one outweighs all the others, it's that, it's feeling like this is family. You see that as a young professional and you have hope, you know, and, and you feel more comfortable in such a competitive industry and you admire that because you don't find that. You don't find that anywhere. Once you get here and you really understand the product and understand what 7 News is all about, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to want to leave that, you know, because you see how much people care um, and that goes for everyone. Everybody wanted to or aspired to be like Channel 7 like WSVN, not any Channel 7, like WSVN. And if you were lucky enough to be part of that, you aspired to be here, that if you were able to get here, then you knew that this was not a place to leave, this was a place to watch bloom. He planted all the seeds that he needed to plant in his kids so that this TV station will continue to flourish and grow and go with the times and change with the times as it always has. I think he's built a foundation that's rock solid. I mean, people know what this is, they know who we are, and it's such a testament to, to what he built and <laughs> decades of this work, and we're everywhere. I think going into the future, it's he would want us to do what we do, and that is uh, aggressive, compelling news coverage, um, some days you, you, you get it right, some days you fall a little short, but you dust yourself off and you come back and you try again the next day. And that's what we'll continue to do. I think news and what we do here is in the Anson family DNA. Sons Andrew and James reaffirmed that sense of purpose. With the news station here locally, we can provide that service and it's important for us to continue to provide that service. It's a great really responsibility. He worked so hard that his legacy could continue and that we would be positioned no matter what happened to him or to us that the company could continue. Now led by the Anson brothers and their management team, WSVN's story continues as does the station's commitment to offer South Florida the best in innovative news and informational programming in the years to come.